If your mind is super scattered like mine, then don't worry. OpenAI released GPTs that are gonna help solve that problem. GPTs are basically customizable personal assistants, and you can customize them in whatever way from being your personal marketer to being your personal developer to being a personal consultant in basically anything. And in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to create a personal assistant with ChatGPT. And now thanks to the help of third parties, such as Make and Zapier, you don't only have to keep the GPT on OpenAI. You can connect it to other third party apps, such as Slack, Todoist, and even your Google Calendar. In this video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step of how to do that. Hi, my name's Jordan. And as you may know, I run a marketing company here in Toronto. So if you'd like to work with me, check out the link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Perfect, so we are at a new day and we're gonna get into it now. All right, so here we are at the ChatGPT homepage. And what you're gonna see here is if you go to the left sidebar and then go down here to explore GPTs, it's gonna take you to a section like this called GPTs. Discover and create custom versions of GPTs that combine instructions, extra knowledge, and combination of skills. So a lot of people say that this is kind of like the app store. Uh, where people can just create their own GPTs and then put them up for sales. But as of this moment, it hasn't really got into that level yet. Not to say that it could get to that level, but at the moment, um, this is what we're working with. So there's GPTs for everything. Landing page creator from HubSpot, map GPT, video GPT by Veed. Uh, even, they've even created apps with GPTs such as Canva, Scholar GPT, and there's just a whole lot here. So you can check it out. But like I said, right now we're gonna create a customized GPT and we're gonna be able to connect it with other applications, just like you saw with like Canva or anything like that. So if you scroll all the way up, then to the top right corner, we're gonna to go to create and it's gonna ask us to fill out a few questions here. So over here, I already wrote out a custom prompt that I'm gonna paste here. It says, could you create a custom assistant for my business that tracks my activity daily? This assistant should review my daily calendar and provide me the detailed to-do list based on my scheduled tasks. Additionally, it should be capable of emailing clients and assisting in managing various aspects of my business. So as you can see, with managing various aspects of my business and with emailing clients, that's not something that's just done on ChatGPT. That's something that needs external apps to be connected. So I'm gonna send that out. And here we're just gonna wait for GPT to access that prompt and really deliver us what we're looking for. But there is gonna be a degree of tweaking that's gonna happen on our end. Let's choose a name for your assistant. How about Business Manager Pro? So it gives us a suggestion. Sure, that sounds good. I'll generate an additional profile picture for Business Manager Pro. Let's see what it looks like. So again, with ChatGPT's incorporation of DALI, it's gonna be able to generate images and profile pictures. And here specifically, it's gonna ask you anything that it should avoid. All I put here is nothing specific, just words, because for some reason, when DALI generates images, a lot of times the words come out really weird. So we're just gonna avoid that. Would you like the assistant to communicate? Should it be a specific tone or style? Let's say, yes, please. Friendly. Business Manager Pro is all set up. You can preview and try it out in the separate chat dialog on the right. If you have any refinements or further changes, uh, just let me know. So over here. So over here on the right-hand side, we already have Business Manager Pro set up. So now we're gonna move on to the fun part, which is actually incorporating Zapier, which is similar to make.com. It's a third-party proxy that's gonna be able to connect a bunch of apps together. So in this case here, we have the GPT already set up and we can use prompts, but we're just not gonna do anything quite yet. We're gonna go into the configurations right up here. Okay, so now that we're here, this is basically the section where we can make a few tweaks. And before we jump into anything, we're gonna go over here into Zapier Actions. And just like I said before, Zapier Actions is the place where you can connect all the apps that Zapier is associated with and you can put them into your chat GPT. 
So if we scroll down a bit, you can see choose your AI platform. We have ChatGPT. So we're going to click here on to get started here. And if we scroll down, go here to get started and then copy the specific URL. Go back to your configuration settings and then scroll down and then go to create a new action. Go here to import from URL and then just paste in the URL that we just copied. Click on import and then you're going to get all of this code. So after we put in the configuration settings, we're going to move on to another section. You're going to go to writing instructions and then scroll all the way down here to rules. So the rules is basically the rules that the GPT is going to follow in order to proceed with every action. So let me unpack that for you a little bit. What this is, is that every time that ChatGPT is getting a command or needs a prompt, it's going to shoot it back to whoever is developing the application. So for instance, you're not going to want this being shot out on the client's end because the client really doesn't need to know all of these specifications over here. So step one, step two, step three. So that's basically what we're going to take here. We're going to go back to GPTs and here in the instruction section, we're just going to put that in here. For required actions over here, these are all the applications that are going to be hooked up to your GPT. And I'm going to show you the specifics of that just in a second, but I just want you to know that we're not going to be using the ones that they have directly here because we're going to be changing that up with the ones that we're going to be using for the personal assistant. So right now we have all of that set up perfectly. Next thing is that we're going to go to actions.zapier.com slash provider. So, and it's a little bit tricky to find. So I'm just going to put the URL to that just right below over here so that you can click on it and also check out the link in the description. You can find the URLs there. So once we're already there, we're going to have connected apps here available and you're going to go to my actions. You won't be able to see my actions if you're not connected to Zapier. So make sure that you already have your Zapier account and everything's already filled up and ready to go. Then here, I just put a test app that was already connected. And if we go to manage actions, here we're going to see all of the actions that are already connected to this GPT. At the moment, I just have Todoist, and Todoist is basically a checklist of everything that needs to be done every single day. But the thing is, we don't just want our assistant to be telling us exactly what to do every day. We want it to be helping us a little bit further. So for this, I'm going to do it right now because it's a little bit time consuming. But what we're going to do is that we're going to connect Todoist, a payment processor with Stripe, calendar events, and Gmail access so that we can ask our personal assistant what we need to do and it can produce a result because it's connected to all these applications, which are our own. So if we go here to add new action, we can go to Google. We can type in Gmail and we're going to go here to Google Calendar, find event. Here we're going to connect our Google Calendar. Press yes, continue to Google Calendar. Log into the Google account and allow. Perfect. So as you can see, it says Google Calendar account. Have AI guess a value for the fields. Set a specific value for this field. And if there's any specific thing that you want Google to connect to on your Google Calendar, as you can see, I have uh, quite a few or just a couple of calendars that I do follow. I'm going to connect it to that. But let's say right now uh, I don't want to connect it and I just want to do uh, any field. So I'll do have AI guess value for this field. And then I'll click on enable action. Then we're going to click add new action. And then we're also going to put in Gmail. And we're going to go into find email, connect a new Gmail account. Yes. My personal one, continue, allow. And for this, it's going to be around the same thing. So what we're going to do is that we're also going to want AI to check all of our emails and see if we have an email from a particular person. So we're going to keep it as how AI guess the value for this field because we don't know exactly what email we're going to be asking for. Now we're going to click on enable action. So now, as you can see, we have Stripe, Gmail, Google Calendar and Todoist connected to our GPT.
Okay, so sorry, really quick transition, had to go celebrate my birthday. We're gonna continue with the tutorial. Anyway, I also had to do a quick troubleshoot with Stripe because for some reason it wasn't generating the code, but now the code went through. So now you can actually see I have Stripe, Gmail, and Google Calendar connected along with the Todoist. So these are gonna be the four components that I'm gonna be using to create my personal assistant. Now I'm gonna to move to the required action section. And in the required action section is where I take the URL of each single action that we're doing and we link it here to the GPT. So for instance, I'm gonna start off with Stripe. I'm gonna take the title of the action, copy it, put it here in action. And then for the configuration link, I'm gonna go back to this browser here. And then up here, you can see the configuration link. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna paste the configuration link here. So I'm gonna delete this section here. I'm gonna take the configuration link, copy it so that I just know the format. And then I'm gonna do the same for the next three actions. Perfect, so now we've set up all the configuration links for each of the four actions that we're gonna be using back here. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the conversation starters, which are basically the prompts that ChatGPT is gonna learn from. Perfect, and as you can see, all of the prompts, the initial prompts that we're gonna be using have been put up here. Another cool feature that you can enable are the capabilities, such as web browsing and a DALI. So also if you want to cite areas or cite resources, I should say, from a web browser, it can also create the links uh, if you have this checked on. You also have DALI in order to generate images if that's something that you wanna ask of the GPT. And just for argument's sake, let's also put in the code interpreter if by any chance there's some uh, degree of code that you want to interpret. But if you do want the GPT to go faster, I would suggest you um, removing any of these that you're not using. So this is the final section and here I just want to wrap everything up together. And as you can see here, we have all of the prompts ready enabled. Uh, what can I do? What calls do I have today in my calendar? Create a Stripe payments. What's on the to-do list? and create an email for any client to schedule a meeting. And with this, I can just click on any of them like this, and it'll basically enable the contact from actions.zapier into my Gmail, and it'll pull out the information of the calls that I have scheduled today. It can do the same for Stripes, taking the invoices and creating an invoice link for a particular customer, searching on your to-do list and seeing what exactly you have planned in terms of tasks, and also creating an email for potential clients. So there's a lot of applications that this can be used for, and this is just scraping the very bare minimum of the surface. So I'm gonna continue to make more videos about this um, because there's just so many applications that you can connect and so many different ways that you can um, create your own personal assistant. So if you like this video, awesome. With that said, that kind of wraps it up. Hopefully that tutorial helped you guys out. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section. I answer them directly, so if you're receiving any messages or receiving any answers, they're basically going to be from me. Uh, with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.